Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. So I want to do a quick video addressing doubts. A lot of young people have what they call doubts, right? Now, I want to break this down and I want to get us to appreciate the three different types of doubts, right? And I'm just referring to these three different things as doubts for now, but we're going to do away with that label itself. First type of doubt is someone that has a question. They just have a question about Islam. Something in Islam that they don't understand and they have a question. Right? Whenever you have a question as a human being, you need to look for answers. Right? It's there. It stays, it stays there within our minds until we seek out the answer and figure things out. Now, if you are in that category and you have a question, that's probably bothering you. First thing you want to do is, again, number one, get rid of that label. It's not a doubt. As soon as you call it a doubt, a doubt is something very negative. If it's a question, refer to it as a question. If it's a question, try to go and seek out the answers, especially if it's bothering you. And trust me, the answers are there. All it takes is some effort, getting off your backside and not being lazy. The second category is waswas, is the whispers, is shaitan when he puts thoughts, these intrusive thoughts that come into our minds. He puts these ideas into our heads. Right? And we know the Prophet ﷺ said and taught us that when shaitan plays, according to one narration, when he would lead one down the road of questioning until they got to the existence of God and ask, well, where did God come from? You know, in such situations, you remind yourself of your own position. You believe in Allah and you believe in his messenger. So with waswas, the thing, the difference here is, is that these intrusive thoughts may just be ridiculous. They may just be picking up on certain things which are completely irrelevant to you and you normally wouldn't care about. And they may bother you because they may keep coming back. Now, in such instances, what you want to do is, number one, you want to remind yourself that it's just waswas. It's just whispers. It's something every single person gets, every single Muslim experiences. And therefore, I'm not going to give it importance. See, one thing I've noticed with waswas is when you give it energy through focusing on it and thinking about it and you invest time in it it starts to bother you more it gives you more anxiety and causes more agitation so you want to stop doing that just remind yourself everyone gets it it's just what's for us nothing important it's there fine let it be i'm just going to get on with what i need to do in my life right so you want to dismantle it you want to you want to take the power away from it and you want to start doing something productive as soon as you get what's for us go do something good go pray Go read Quran, right? And one thing you'll notice as soon as you start doing this, you shift your mindset, you stop giving it energy through worrying about it and making it big and giving it energy. And you start, as soon as it happens, you start doing something positive and productive like praying or reading Quran. You'll notice over time, it'll start to disappear. Again, remove the label. Remove that doubt label that we put on it. It's was was okay? And deal with it appropriately. The third category is, is something a bit more, it's a, it's a bit more tricky. Now, this is where people start to create or manufacture doubts in their minds. And the reason they do this is because they are, they're, trying, they're, they're trying to distance themselves from Islam. Now, why would someone want to distance themselves from Islam? In many cases, I've noticed where people have started to engage in fulfilling their desires and engage in certain sins. And those sins and desires have become a habit. They do it habitually and they enjoy it. And what happens over time is this creates this dissonance inside the person because on one end, they are so enjoying their desires and the bad things that they're doing. And on the other end, they know they're Muslim and this is not right in Islam. So there is this internal struggle. Now, when this starts taking place, the human being doesn't like to be in this, this conflicted space in their minds. So one of two things needs to happen. Either they move away from those bad things, those desires and those sins and start realigning them with Islam, which is the right thing to do because everyone's, no one's perfect, everyone needs to improve and that's what life is about, that's what Allah is telling us to do, to improve ourselves, to develop ourselves, to grow spiritually. That's what we should be doing but instead of doing that, they take the easy route which is, you know what, let me distance myself from Islam. Now, how is one going to distance themselves from Islam? One of the psychological things that needs to happen is that you need to give yourself excuses. You need to give yourself reasons as to why Islam is not true for you. And this is where people start manufacturing 
these doubts. So in this case, what one needs to do is realize what they're doing, first and foremost. Realize if this is the case with them, that they are going through this. You know, this is what's happened. Uh, be honest with themselves. And then remind themselves that just because they may make up something to distance themselves from Islam, it doesn't mean Islam isn't true. And therefore the consequences of what they're doing are still there. So a rational, intelligent person that wants to make the most of their life will be like, okay, you know what? It's difficult. I have to go on a journey. You know, I may fall into the same sin a thousand times again, but Allah is the most forgiving. And as long as I keep trying to come out of it and better myself as a person, that's going to get rid of my dissonance. Because the dissonance is there because you're lazy about it. You don't want to do anything about that situation where on one end, you know, Islam doesn't encourage a specific type of behavior or you doing specific things. And on the other end, you are so enjoying those desires, fulfilling those desires, and you're doing nothing about it. That's where the problem is. When you do nothing about it, you become lazy. And the second problem is when you do the wrong thing, which is you try to distance yourself from Islam. So what you want to do is do the right thing. And the right thing is more challenging. It's more difficult. Right? But that's what makes life meaningful. Right? That struggle you, you engage in to overcome your dark side, if you like, to align yourself with the truth and do this for the sake of Allah, that's what's going to enrich your life. So that's how I would deal with that type of situation. So in summary, the key lesson, I guess, I, I want, one of the key things I want you to take away from this is that in many cases, we lead ourselves to believing we have doubts. We give it that label and that label brings with it a lot of negativity. Right. And then that in itself starts to agitate us internally and put us in some internal turmoil. So what you want to do, what I want you to do, if you have doubts, really ask yourself, do you fit into one of these three categories? And if you do, then use the advice I've shared to to deal with that. And the very first thing you want to do is you want to detach from that label of calling it a doubt. Don't call it a doubt. Is it a question? Then call it a question and look for the answers. Is it was was? And if it's was was, then then do what you need to do with that. Don't give it power. Don't give it energy. Don't focus on it. Focus on productive things, right? So that eventually dies away because everyone gets it. Is it that you're manufacturing doubts to distance yourself from Islam so you come, you can comfortably enjoy your desires, or then really come to terms with what's going on and go on that journey to fix that and make your life meaningful in doing so. I hope this video was beneficial, brothers and sisters. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Uh, if there's any other topics that you want me to cover, let me know in the comments and I'll speak to you guys next time. Assalamu alaikum.